is funny. Fernando de Rojas, La Celestina. Hello and welcome back again. Throughout part two, Cervantes will deploy this kind of self-reflection whereby narrators and characters refer to the novel itself. The result is comical and intellectual instability. In chapter three, the technique creates a full-blown crisis. Carrasco begins by praising the accuracy of both the Moorish author and the Christian translator of part one, and then he cuts straight to Don Quixote's chief anxiety. The modesty and continence of the platonic love between your grace and my lady Doña Dulcinea of Toboso. This reference to the heir's neoplatonic theory of love suggests a complex philosophical aspect of the novel which most readers ignore. At the same time, this is Cervantes' first response to certain errors that readers claim to have found in part one. Sancho says he has never heard anybody refer to Dulcinea with the title Don and states, so the history's already wrong on that account. However, Don Quixote referred to her with this title twice in part one, but Sancho was not present. Moreover, Carrasco dismisses Sancho's criticism. That's not an important objection. Really? Dulcinea's status is unimportant? The relative accuracy and sophistication of different readers' understandings of part one are now a major issue. Did you know the Neoplatonists of the Renaissance understood love as an attraction between two souls that was cosmic, metaphysical, and inevitable? Next, Don Quixote asks Carrasco which of his adventures received the most attention in this book. The Bachelor recalls numerous episodes, the windmills, the fulling mills, the battle with the sheep, the dead body adventure on the road to Segovia, the freeing of the galley slaves, the battle with the Basque, Rocinante's adventure with the Galician mares, even Sancho's blanketing. Don Quixote observes that all true histories have their ups and downs, but Carrasco reports that even so, some readers would have preferred that the author overlook some of the infinite beatings given to Lord Quixote on various occasions. Author Vladimir Nabokov made the same complaint over 300 years later. Sancho quips that these beatings are the essence of the story. That's where the truth of the history comes in. When Don Quixote notes that Aeneas and Odysseus were not as perfect as Virgil and Homer described them, Carrasco makes a theoretical distinction between writing as a poet and writing as an historian. Apparently, Ciriamete is an historian. According to Sanson Carrasco, who writes like a historian? A, the Christian narrator. B, Cide Amete Benengeli. C, the Moorish translator. Correct answer, B, Cide Amete Benengeli. Now Sancho enters the discussion in big ways, asserting his own importance and quarreling with both Don Quixote and Carrasco about textual details. He says that if true history is the Moorish author's goal, then surely among my master's beatings are to be found my own. Don Quixote is annoyed by Sancho's refusal to forget certain events. The squire insists that he is one of the novel's major personages, and Carrasco corrects his pronunciation Personages, not personages, Sancho, my friend. Carrasco reports that some readers find Sancho too gullible regarding the governorship of that isle offered by Lord Don Quixote. Things get political again when Sancho insists he is qualified to be a governor and that there have been governors who don't measure up to the sole of my shoe. Finally, Sancho warns that there would have been trouble if the author of the history had slandered his superior ethnic status. If he had said things about me that did not suit the old Christian that I am, even the deaf would have hurt us. Carrasco responds with an ironic jab. That would be miraculous. Making the deaf here would be a miracle, but Carrasco insinuates that representing Sancho as a perfect old Christian would be yet another. That's all for now. We'll see each other in the next video. If you liked this video and want to continue learning more about the knight errant Don Quixote de la Mancha, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel here. Also, you can enroll in our free online course on Don Quixote by clicking here.